Hi, it's Verity here and welcome back to the Wow Embossing Powder YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be using a technique called crackled glass embossing. I saw this on the Wow Embossing Powders website where they have a technique library. So if you've not checked that out, make sure you go over there, check out the techniques. There's a whole list and a whole variety that you can try. Now, there will be some caveats that I will talk about later on in the video of how to get the best crackled glass look. I didn't have quite all the supplies, so I'm showing you my impromptu makeshift version. So I'm using a selection of embossing powders and really for the crackled glass look, you want a clear embossing powder. So I'm using clear gloss. Now on the actual Technique Library, it says to use clear ultra high because you do want to create a thick layer of embossing powder. Because I only have the clear gloss regular, I wouldn't get quite as thick a layer of embossing powder with just one layer. So what I'm doing is I'm creating many layers of clear gloss and embossing powder to create that thickness. Now I like to use my brayer to apply embossing ink to a card panel. I picked this up from Marion. It's a great way of getting the ink coverage quite even over the panel, really sure that you're actually covering the whole panel. Also find I don't waste as much ink because when you smush your ink pad down, you probably over ink it, but then you also get quite patchy inking. I know that doesn't make sense, but it does happen. So with the brayer, you get a much more smoother background. So once I've covered it with clear gloss embossing powder, I'm then heat setting it. Now obviously on camera, heat setting clear embossing, you're not gonna notice it that much until it turns in the light and you see that shine. Now as I mentioned, this is regular. So this will be a sort of a reasonably good coverage, but it's gonna create a thin layer of heat embossing. And with the crackle glass, we want it thick. The reason is because we wanna create those cracks. So what I did was I reapplied embossing ink, then recovered it with clear gloss embossing powder and heat set again. And I did this about three times, three or four times before I moved on to the next section. So the next section is I wanted to add a little bit of interest to that background. So I didn't want it completely white. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking some ultra high metallic gold embossing powder and I'm going to use my spatula. Now I'm using a metal spatula because we don't want to add static into the powder. If you use a plastic spoon, plastic spatula, you'll put static back into your powder. And wow, I've done a lot to remove that to prevent the powder sticking to where you didn't want it to. Now this is ultra high, so these are thicker granules than your normal one. And I wanted that because I wanted to create sort of like a speckling across the panel. And I'm just adding it to where I want it to. Now I haven't put any ink over this. And the trick is you heat from underneath the panel. If you do this from underneath, it means that the heat penetrates the card, then melts the embossing powder, and this melts it before it's blown off the panel. If you do it from the front, the heat gun is going to blow off those granules before it's actually had a chance to melt because we've got nothing sticking it down, nothing adhering it to that panel at the moment. And I just love how this sort of gold floats in the panel. It looks absolutely beautiful. Now I decided after I did this that I still didn't have quite enough a thick layer of clear embossing powder to create that crackled glass look. So I decided to go back over and add another layer of clear embossing. Now I wish I'd done this before I put the gold on because it had muted the gold a little bit. So just bear that in mind if you decide to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the second panel before I show you the crackling. And this I am using all this cognac. And this is got a, like a lovely brown, coppery, orangey tone to it with some gold flecks in there. And the gold flecks are ultra high. So I have again covered my card panel with some embossing ink, just using my brayer again to get a good even coverage. And as you can see, once I've tapped off all the excess, I've got a really good coverage of powder all over that panel. It's a nice even coverage. Again, I'm heat setting this from behind because this does contain ultra high gold in the actual powder mix. And although we have got an embossing ink on there for the ultra high to stick to, it still could blow off because they're larger particles before you've had a chance to melt it. So again, with this panel, I added several layers. I did about two to three layers before I was ready to use it. And now I'm gonna show you the process of cracking. I left it to solidify and harden for a bit. I didn't do it straight after heating it because you want it to be hard because you want it to crack. And all you have to do then is just manipulate the card. So just play about manipulating it. You'll create a lot of cracks and then eventually you'll notice sort of like a crackle glaze look. Now, this may not be your cup of tea. If you're a clean and simple person that loves beautiful softness, then this adds a lot of texture, which is fantastic. And it adds texture without adding too much bulk. 
But if you're not a fan of texture, you might want to try a different technique. But this is a great way of adding texture that's subtle. It can be tactile. You can rub your hands over it. But it just gives you the texture in when it catches the light. And I think it looks beautiful. So I'm just really manipulating that card, getting loads of cracks in there. And don't be afraid to really move that crack card around. So I'm just going to show you a close up of that crackling. And you can see when I in the light how I've got all those cracks running through there. And it's like it's a glass panel that's being cracked. But it gives you so many veins, so many interests, and so many. It lo just looks really different, and it's a different technique to use. So I did the same with the other embossing panel, and this one is a little bit less uh, noticeable until you turn it in the light, because obviously we have a colour. We've not got a clear glass, so you won't see those veins as easily unless you turn it in the light or unless you're looking at it quite close. But I thought it looked really beautiful as well. And it, as I say, it gave that background a really lovely texture as well. And it's just different. So to turn these into cars, I decided I wanted to cut into the panels. I wasn't going to use the panels as is. And I got out some of my nesting circle dies to die cut various different sizes of circles from them. And I was going to use this to create a really fun and easy quick card to make. If you're interested in any of the products used in today's video, just check out the description box below. There are affiliated links at no extra cost to you, all listed in the description box below. So once I'd die cut them all out, I was then adding some foam pads to the bin, to the back of the circles, and then I'm just layering them up onto some of the cards. I'm playing about with the composition, switching the colours up, overlapping them, underlaying them, and having a bit of a play. And really manipulating how your eye is led through card by the position of those circles. To uh, add a sentiment, I use one of my Fab Foilers sentiments from the Sweet Sentiments Fab Foiler set, and that was just foiled in Wow Gold Fab Foil. And then for the other sentiment, I had a Heat and Boss sentiment that came from the Natural Flourishes stamp set from Catherine Puller Designs. I'd had already pre Heat and Boss with some white onto the black cardstock. That was just in my stash, and I just used that to finish off the card. And then to finish these cards completely, I added a few Black Nouveau drops just to sort of mimic the circle, bigger circles, allow the eye to travel through the card. Now as I turn it on the light, you can see all that crackling, all that texture and all that interest in those panels, in those circle die cuts, and how this has really changed the look. So have you thought about trying this technique before? Have you ever heard of it? Let me know in the comments below if you have, and which one out of these two cards is your favourite? I think they are great cards for masculine. They can also suit anybody if you just change the colour out, change the sentiment, depending on who you're giving it to. If you're new to the channel, why not think about subscribing? You can hit that bell icon to be notified when the next video is up. Until next time, happy crafting.